Today I want to continue with uh, part two of our genetics unit on Punnett squares, all right, to determine percentages of offspring um, from both mom and dad. Um, so what I want to first do is just take a look at this short video presentation to give us a little bit of a foundation as to what we are going to take a look at today. And then after the video, we will uh, do a few Punnett squares um, as practice so that over the next couple of weeks, we um, have a pretty good idea of how to create them, why we create them, and analyze the percentages and ratios of, of the offspring created by the parents. Hi, my name is Mary Poppenrock. I'm an adjunct professor in biology, and today we're going to have a little fun with Mendelian Punnett squares. Now, before we get started and jumping into our Punnett square problem, let's put down some ground rules. First, we're going to talk about alleles. Alleles are going to be like different flavors of cheese. So, go into the ice cream shop, there's 31 flavors of ice cream. Even though they're all different flavors, they're all still ice cream, right? Alleles are going to be those different flavors of genes that you have available to you. The next thing I want to talk about is dominant and recessive. In any relationship, some of those alleles are going to be dominant and some of those alleles are going to be recessive. Those dominant alleles, if they're present, they're going to have more of a say in what the outcome of that cross is going to be. And the recessives, well, they're going to have little to no say unless they are two recessives that are available. Also, in each of our crosses, we're going to have one allele from our mother and one allele from our father. Now, let's jump into our crosses. Today, we're going to do a four square Punnett square. So, we want to start out by drawing a square. In that square, you're going to draw a line right down the middle from the top to the bottom and a line from left to right. Now, you have four individual squares. Each of those squares is going to be a probability, and each of those squares is one-fourth, right? Or Next, we're going to put our parent allele on the punnet square. Now, it doesn't really matter if you put male or female on the top, but generally, people put male on top, female to the left. For our problem today, we're going to use eye color. The eye color alleles are going to be for our father, going to be brown phenotypically expressed alleles. That means that that father has brown eyes, but his genotype or the genes at play, his alleles are going to be big B, little b. That means that he's heterozygous or he has two different alleles for that trait of eye color. It's a little important to note at this time that all of these letters are completely arbitrary. You can make up any letters you want. However, in any relationship, a capital letter or a big letter, like say big B, is going to be for the dominant. And a little letter or a lowercase letter, in this case little b, is going to be for the recessive. Okay, so we have the father. Big B, little b. He's heterozygous, meaning he has two What about the mom? The mom has blue eyes. So phenotypically, her expression that you see on the outside is blue eyes. Her genotype, or the genes at play, are going to be little b, little b, or homozygous recessive. All right, it's time to do our cross. Now, we're going to take one from the top and one from the left, and we're going to bring them down into those squares. So, we have on our top, big B, little b, then bring another big B, little b down. In our right square at the top, we have little b, little b. And our bottom right square, we have little b, little b. Okay, what does that mean for the probability of getting an offspring with what kind of eye color? Now remember, each of those squares is going to be 25%. So, we have a 25 plus 25 or 50% chance of getting an offspring with brown eyes. And we have a 25 plus 25 or 50% chance of getting an offspring with blue eyes. And for a fun little extra problem when you're sitting around the dinner table, take the eye colors or the phenotypes of your parents. Even though you won't know the exact genotype or the genetic makeup behind what you're seeing on the outside, do some crosses and see if you can find out the probability that you could have actually had a different eye color. Thanks for watching. Okay, so that um, gives you a little bit of an idea of what we're going to be doing today. We're going to do a couple of uh, examples. But please feel free to go back and watch the first uh, three three minutes and 50 seconds all right, of how to do a Punnett square if at any time you get confused. All right, so let's, let's take a look at um, an example here. All right, here we're going to cross 
uh, a homozygous dominant, capital T, capital T, with a homozygous recessive, okay, lowercase t, lowercase t. So the first thing we're going to do is complete, all right, the Punnett square. So we drop one from mom, one from dad. So here we have big T, little t. All right, over here we have big T, little t. All right, down here we have big T, little t. And over here at the bottom right, big T from the blue and little t from the red. All right, so a Punnett square has now been created. So now we take a look at uh, the offspring, the probability. Remember, each square is worth 25% for a total of 100. So when we cross these two parents, one that's homozygous dominant and one that's homozygous recessive, we see that each box has a heterozygous genotype, which means that all of the offspring will be tall, as we see one dominant allele in each of the boxes. Now, we also see one recessive allele in each of the boxes. That means that they, these offspring will now carry that trait. So in the next generation, if the, these offspring uh, reproduce, then there's a chance that these tall people may have a short kid. Okay, so let's take a look at our uh, genotype ratio. Okay, ratio is numbers. All right, so we're just going to count up the, the numbers of heterozygous genotypes that we see. All right, and here we see four. So the, the ratio is a four to zero genotypic re ratio. That means that the offspring here, there are four heterozygous and there are zero homozygous dominant and, ho and zero homozygous recessive. So it's just a ratio, all right? Now, if we wanted to look at genotypic percentage, all right, what is the genotypic percentage? Well, remember from the video, each box is worth 25%. So here we have 100% of the offspring would be heterozygous. So the genotype percentage would be 100%. Okay, let's take a look at another example. All right, here we're going to cross a homozygous dominant mom, BB, capital B, capital B, with a heterozygous dad, capital B, lowercase b. Brown eyes, capital B, is dominant to blue. Okay, blue is the recessive. All right, so we're going to fill in our Punnett square. All right, here in the first box, we have capital B, capital B. Over here, down in the bottom, le uh, bottom left, we have capital B from dad and capital B from mom. Over here, in the top right, we have, all right, uh, we have a lowercase b and a capital B. Um, from each uh, parent, but we're going to put the capital B first, all right, because it is dominant. And then down here in the bottom, all right, we have a big B, little b, all right. So let's take a look at our genotypes of our offspring. So the, we're making a list here now of the genotypes. Okay, so what do we see in the boxes? Well, I see homozygous dominant. I have two boxes filled with them, and we see heterozygous. So I'm just going to make my list here of the genotypes that I see. Very simple. Okay, uh, Genotype percentage. Okay, uh, well, think of in percentages. We, you know, 25%, 50%, 75%, 100%. Well, my I have uh, homozygous dominant, two out of the four boxes. So that's going to be 50%. 50% homozygous dominant and the other two boxes are both heterozygous so therefore I would see 50% heterozygous all right 50 plus 50 gives me a total of hundred percent all right uh, the phenotypes of the offspring well there is a big B a dominant allele represented in each of the four boxes so remember you only need one dominant allele all right of the two to show the dominant trait so here in all of the offspring, we're only going to see a brown-eyed offspring, <clears throat> even though we know that 
50% of them carry that blue trait. So let's take a look at phenotype percentage. All right, phenotype percentage. Again, what do they look like? Well, here we have 100% brown. Okay. All right, and then the last thing you may be asked is, what are the genotype ratios and phenotype ratios? Okay. <clears throat> well, we look in our uh, our Punnett square here. All right, we see that there is a two to two ratio of homozygous dominant to heterozygous. We have two dominants and two heterozygous. Okay. And then our phenotype ratio, well, what do they look like? Well, all four boxes show a dominant trait. So therefore, we have a four to zero phenotype ratio that they're going to be brown. Now, what I'm going to attach to this video is two problems, okay, from slide, from slide 19 and slide 20. Okay, that you are going to try to work on your own. You are going to fill in the Punnett squares based on the type of uh, traits that the parents possess. And then you're just going to give me the genotype of the offspring, the phenotypes, the percentages, and the ratios. Give it a shot. Again, this is practice. We're going to be working on these for, for, for you know, about a week or, or so. And eventually work our way up to some dihybrid crosses. But if you have any questions, review the video again or reach out to me via email. Thanks. And hi.